Greetings, 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 my abundant seed family. How are you guys doing today? What's the weather like in, in your neck of the woods? I'm noticing that we are having some really unusual weather patterns. So I hope, you know, you and your family are not really severely affected and you guys continue to be safe. Uh, I was just thinking because uh, most of you know that two things I like to do. I like to cook. Well, not really two things that I like to do, but two things that I do generally. And I realize that if I don't have them, then they would be missed. <clears throat> In terms of cooking, you know, salt, and in terms of doing my videos, I need light. So the video today, I, I, I termed it, you will be missed. Could you ever, or have you ever thought of, you know, you have something to eat. And as you bite it and you start to eat it and you taste it, you're asking yourself, something is missing from this meal or, or this thing that I'm eating but you can't seem to put your hand on it but you know the all the ingredients are not there or they are not in the right proportion it's, so you're eating it and it's probably one of your favorite meal but you can't put your hand on what is missing you know I, I experienced that a lot I would ask my wife something missing right but what it is and in the same way, but in the same way, on the other hand, I should say, if you eat something and there is no salt, immediately you say, hey, this thing needs salt. Now, these are for the people who for medical reasons may not be eating salt and that kind of stuff. But most of us who, you know, indulge in some salt and stuff, the moment you eat, it's like, this needs salt. And... It brings me to the point because all of you who know me and follow me know that I love to cook. And Jesus, in speaking to his disciples, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13, he said, you are the salt. You are the salt of the earth. You. But if the salt has lost its taste. If you have lost your purpose, how can, how can it be made, made salty? How can the menu be salty if you didn't put any salt in it? It is no longer, now this is very significant. Jesus is saying, it is no longer good for nothing sometimes we have that meal and it doesn't taste it has no salt but we still eat it but imagine you who have been placed on this earth as the salt of the earth and you have lost that favor so you are not there to favor the earth he is saying what will the world be like without you being that representative that he has placed you here to be. He made you and he commissioned you. When God made us, he made us with everything. He equipped us with everything to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish this earth. And if we are not doing what we are supposed to do, it is saying that we are no longer good for nothing. Okay. It's like you have a job. But you are going to work and you are not carrying out your functions. You are not productive. Sooner or later, you will be disciplined because you are of no value to the company or the organization. 
and sooner or later after probably several notices you will be fired because you are no longer valuable and this is what jesus is saying it is no longer good for nothing if the sword has lost its purpose what is your purpose why are you here what are you doing about the gift that the lord god almighty has given you how are you stirring that gift is it benefiting your community is it benefiting the kingdom of god now let me just say this we are not useless beings the enemy wants us to be useless so when you think about utilizing or using your gift for the honor and glory of god even if it's in a very small way you have the enemy casting doubts bringing lies to you i i i can recall just recently actually pastor rich wilkinson jr he said the enemy the same one who is telling the lies to you that you're believing the enemy he is so broke he doesn't even have the keys to his own house because jesus said in revelation chapter 1 verse 18 i am he that liveth and was dead behold i am alive forevermore amen that means there is the conclusion i am alive forevermore punto finale and he said i have the keys of hell and of death and we know that the enemy is already condemned to hell so that's his house and he doesn't even have the keys but yet he's getting into your minds and my minds and telling us what we can and cannot do and he's not even a man in his own house because jesus control the keys so let me remind you you are the salt of this earth use your gift to bring honor and glory to god let us talk a little bit about the light for this video to give some level of good quality it needs good lighting conditions when we moved here all my lights i had them and they are in storage now so for me to do a video i have to now depend on the external light the light outside of the building so i sit close to the window where i could get maximum light along with the artificial light in the house basically to give us some lighting because i don't see the need to go buy other lights and so on but so light is so important imagine that you are in a very dark place one little speck of light gives you hope if there's an entire area that is dark and one man is walking miles away with a flashlight you will see that light coming and moving that is how effective lights can be and jesus is saying you are the light of christ you are my representative in the world you are the light of christ in the world and this is matthew chapter 5 verse 14 a city on top of a hill cannot be hidden so once your light shines it cannot be hidden he said you are the light of the world ask yourself as an abundant seed because you are an abundant seed what am i doing to positively impact the people or even my environment i have this journal and one of the things that you know i write in it every day is that i want to impact the life of one person positively every day i write that my mission is to impact the life of one person positively every single day. That is one of the things I put in my journal. 
what are you doing? So what are you doing? Are you doing something in the church, at work, in your neighborhood? How can you then partner with somebody? Let's say you don't have the confidence right now, but you have this idea. How can you channel that through someone else until you can build up the courage to do it? You have to start somewhere. Do not let, as, the, as we said before, the enemy continue to steal your joy. Don't give in to what the enemy wants to do. God has sent us here on a mission. We are to occupy this earth until he returns. And we have a responsibility to impact lives for the kingdom and for the honor and glory of God. So as I said, even if the flames are small now, start somewhere. Someone will come along and fan those flames and they will get brighter and brighter and brighter. The light and the salt is not about you. No, it's not. It's about impacting people's life for the kingdom of God. He said you are the light of the world. The light of the world. And you are the salt of the earth. Recognize this. Jesus was very, very clear. The light of the world and the salt of the earth. If all of us do our part to positively impact the lives of individuals within our small communities, there will be a compound effect. And what is going to happen, it's going to blossom or bloom into something extremely beautiful. Wouldn't you like to see this place much more beautiful? It was Mahatma Gandhi who said, you be, you be the, the, the person you want the world to be. You be that person. Let us not leave the impact and making a difference up to politicians. We have seen what they are capable of already. Let us not leave it up to these so-called leaders. You have a plan. God had a plan and a purpose for you and I to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. That is why he said to us, go into all the world and, and preach the good news. The good news is the message of salvation. Are we going to make that difference? You abundant seed family, I'm challenging you today. I'm challenging you today to go out in your neighborhood, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's the neighbor next door, and start making a difference. Let us impact the lives of people one by one. Be the light and the salt that Jesus expects us to be. We can do it. We can do it together. Let's do it. All for the honor and glory of God. Remember who you are. You are an abundant seed. You are planted by the rivers of waters. And you will bring forth fruit in your season. You have to start to be able to identify your season. Is this your season? I love you. I love you. 
I love you and may God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.